Welcome to the IDP Plus Advice Show. We're going to talk about snaps and playing time for IDP uh, individual defensive players. We're going to talk about alignments. We're going to talk about injuries. We're going to talk about potential waivers, players to pick up, etc. And with that, let's go ahead and get started. <laughs> Alrighty, welcome everyone, and I am your host, Ricky Rodriguez. You can find me at RickyRod66. You can also find me on the same YouTube channel on the IDP Plus Start Sit Show on Sunday mornings with some great co-hosts of mine, and we will give you some fantastic help with your start and sit going into the games over the weekend. With that, let's jump in with the NFC North and the Bears. Bears played 64 snaps. Uh, usual normal amount, which is great. Jaquan Brisker was ruled out yet again. So that's four games, five weeks that he's been out with a concussion. That is not a good sign for the rest of the year, folks. Um, in redraft, I'd almost be giving up at this point if there's no news and all. Don't let him waste a bench spot unless you have an IR spot. Elijah Hicks played in Brisker's absence again. So the last four games has been all Elijah Hicks, 100% of the snaps. He only had five tackles, four solo and a pass defense. Not exciting. That's why he's a backup moving into a starting role during an injury situation. So desperate maybe for buys or something. Yeah, but not much more than that. Kevin Byard led the team with 11 tackles, five solo, one pass defense. That was sort of an outlier game for him uh, based on what he's been doing for the previous part of the year. So don't go overboard on Byard. At linebacker position, actually TJ Edwards led the uh, the Bears in tackles with 13 he had seven solo, one pass defense, which was an interception as well, which always helps in those big play leagues. Now, Montez Sweat, who has been one of uh, my actually biggest disappointments this year, he had this shin injury, missed a week, comes back, only played 45% of the snaps, where he usually is in the 60% range or so, with one assisted tackle, one quarterback hit. So guessing that shin injury limited his playing time. Watch the injury reports. If he starts moving more towards uh, full practices earlier in the week, probably a good sign for the future weeks to come, but someone who has been disappointing this year. Moving to the Lions, the Lions played a little bit more than normal, 68 snaps. Uh, so Darius Smith, who they acquired in the trade, you probably all saw, but just in case, that he was not active this week. But he was like a coach on the sidelines. It was pretty impressive how uh, he was sharing his knowledge and information with so many Lions defensive players to try and fire him up and teach him. It was really great. So I think he's going to be a great ad there. Not necessarily a great ad for your fantasy football teams. On the linebacker side of things, Malcolm Rodriguez was ruled uh, inactive again, and Jalen Reeves-Mabin was put on IR. So what does that mean? Jack Campbell played 100% of the snaps again, as did Alex Anzalone. Campbell only, for the 100% of the snaps, though, only had five tackles, three solo, one pass defense. Not overly exciting. Anzalone, had, Anzalone also had only three tackles and three solo. So not much production from the linebackers. That must have something to do potentially with the way Houston attacked them from an offensive perspective. We had been seeing a rotation in linebacker position with, with the Lions. This week with uh, Rodriguez out and Reeves Mabin out and also Derek Barnes has been on IR, Ben Neiman became the number three linebacker. Ben Neiman is a special teams demon. He is not a that solid of a linebacker as it goes in the pros. He only played 19% of the snaps. So that's why you see Campbell with 100. Anzalone is typically at 100. As Rodriguez comes back, I do expect that Campbell's percent is going to come down. That That's my uh, crystal ball guess. So keep that in mind if you're banking on Campbell for a continued 100% for the rest of the year. I just don't see it happening. Brian Branch did lead the team with nine tackles, five solo. He had a tackle for loss, two pass defenses. Man, that dude is a stud on the field. He is all over the place. Uh, and someone I would want on my dynasty teams for sure from a safety perspective. The Packers were on by this week. So um, what will be interesting to see with the Packers now is we've had this mixed secondary, you know, Williams and Bullard and Nixon in the slot, Nixon outside, Jair Alexander was, was in, then he was out. 
It's going to be real interesting to see how they play things. If you have other options, I am avoiding Williams. I am avoiding Brisker, uh, excuse me, Buller this coming week until we see how this plays out with potentially everybody a little bit more healthy. The Vikings, wrapping up the NFC North, played only 44 snaps on defense. The week before, they only played 54 snaps. We've talked about it. I'd like to continue to remind folks, particularly where we have new folks, that 65 to 66 snaps is roughly an average amount for a week for a defense. 54, and in particular 44, extremely low. With that, your individual defensive players are not going to get many snaps. So on top of that, Blake Cashman only played 80% of the snaps as he returned from injury. Ivan Pace played 59%, which is more than he typically played. He usually played in the 30 to 40% range uh, when Cashman was 100% healthy. So both of them had identical lines, five tackles, three solo, one sacks, excuse me, one sack, two TFLs and a quarterback hit. So for the limited snaps, that's not bad. But it is limited snaps, and if this continues, it's going to be hard to continue to trust uh, IDP players. A couple of other things of interest. Andrew Van Ginkle, I mentioned it briefly last week. Once again, he played about six snaps in that inside linebacker type of role this week, just to move him around a little bit. The good news for Van Ginkle, though, he was back to 91% of the snaps. So the week before, for some reason, he was down to 72. He's usually in that 90, 95% range. Good to see him back in that 90% range. But unfortunately, once again, on 44 snaps. Dallas Turner was back down to 25% of the snaps versus the 48 that he had jumped to the week before. Patrick Jones was down to 23%, uh, down from the 61% he had played the week before. So what is happening there, folks? I think what's happening is they really want to have more balanced Playing time among folks, not playing everybody 100%, but playing um, a mixture to give people rest and keep them fresh. But because they only play 44 snaps, in this particular case, they stuck with the starters a lot more and there was less rotation in. So I do expect if they do get back to the 60s range, we'll see back to that rotation. You see Dallas Turner bumping up a bit, a bit Patrick Jones, but two people that are once again not putting in my starting lineup. At the safety position, Cam Bynum, 91% of the snaps. Josh Medalist, 98% of the snaps. Harrison Smith, 100%. Back to what I was just talking about. Medalist and Bynum had been playing to the eight, in the 80% range. This week, they're in the 90s. I think it's just simply because there were so few snaps on defense, they didn't need to rotate them out. So I, I expect they'll be back in the 80% range. That's my crystal ball guess on that one. Okay, we're going to move to the NFC East, and let's talk about the Commanders. Commanders played a whopping 78 snaps on defense. Jeremy Chin had his second fantastic game in a row. This week, 13 tackles, which matches 13 tackles from a week before. But six were solo, a pass defense, which was an interception, and a fumble recovery. He thrived as a rookie, struggled since then with injuries and schemes, but Quinn is figuring out how to use him, and it is very productive. So uh, Chin is someone for our lineups on a regular basis. Dante Fowler, sixth game in a row with a, uh, with a sack. He continues to play about 50% of the snaps. And, uh, in fact, he had two sacks this week. So Fowler is someone definitely, particularly for these edge-required lineups, put him into your lineups. Quan Martin, uh, we talked about it. Just want to reiterate. We've talked about it in the past, that is. 71% of the snaps he's playing at deep safety, six tackles, two solo. That's actually not bad for 71% deep, but not someone we put in our lineup. One of our fool, fool's gold for this week, Sheldon Day. He had eight tackles, four solo, and a tackle for loss. That was on 40% of the snaps. Don't expect that to continue, folks. Don't go chasing after those points. Johnny Newton, he had three tackles, one solo quarterback hit. And he had one big, really bonehead jump off sides and fourth down, which caught, which cost them the opportunity to potentially get the ball back in uh, and go down for a uh, drive to win the game. So that's what happens with a rookie sometimes. Don't hold that against him. I still think he has a bright future. Deron Payne, up to 71% of the snaps, five tackles, two solo. I'd sure like to see him get back to some of those sacks we saw from him in the past. But at least he's almost getting to where – in leagues where tackles counter a decent amount that you could potentially play him as an inside linebacker. 
uh, excuse me, interior defensive lineman. Sorry. Did I mention that I'm uh, dealing, I'm working on about three and a half hours sleep. So if I stutter and I'll beg your forgiveness for this week, folks, because I just didn't get a lot of sleep this past night. Going on to the Cowboys. Cowboys played a very nice 69 snaps this past week. Micah Parson is finally, was finally active. Deron Bland, unfortunately, was not. It was a blowout game that did impact the snap count as the game went on, particularly in the fourth quarter. I saw a lot, saw a lot of starters come out for the Cowboys. But on only 54% of the snaps for Micah Parsons, he's usually in that 75 to 80% range. But on that 54, 54%, he had two sacks. That's a great sign considering he's coming back off of a high ankle injury and he's ready to roll in your lineups. Eric Kendricks uh, on the linebacker side of things played 88% of the snaps. Once again, he went out of the game late, nine tackles and five solo. DeMarvian Overshone, uh, who played almost 100% of the snaps the week before, only played 71% of the snaps and was very productive with 11 tackles, eight solo, two sacks, two, two TFLs, two quarterback hits. But he had a knee injury. Now, the initial, concern, initial uh, thoughts were very concerning. Now the word is that he probably won't even go on IR, but it will probably miss a couple of games. So if you have overshown and been relying on him, you will need a replacement. Damone Clark went in and played the other 29% of the snaps that Overshown missed. So he was the direct replacement for Overshown in this case. Chauncey Golden played 79%. He was, you know, in the high 80s and the low 90s because they were so uh, shallow at defensive end. But he, uh, so he's down to 79%. He had three tackles, three solo. He's been in that five tackles range the past couple of weeks, a little bit lower because he played a few less snaps. Carl Lawson still stayed at, still stayed at 63%. I expect Lawson, Goldston, and Parsons to have the primary three-person rotation along with Tyrus Weed getting a few snaps here and there. But those are your three uh, edge players for the Cowboys. Not putting Lawson in my lineup. Goldston, we've talked about in the past. You know, probably not putting in unless I'm really desperate. Moving on to the Giants, who only played 60 snaps on defense. Jason Pinnock, starting in the safety uh, room, was inactive this week. In his absence, Dane Belton played 100% of the snaps but he only had three tackles, one of which was solo. Tyler Newbin, though, ding, 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 ding. Tyler Newbin, 12 tackles, eight solo, one tackle for loss. Now, what's been happening on his snaps is that last week he only played 20% deep. The week before, he played 37% deep. The week before that is 55%. So what that's saying is he's moving closer and closer to the line, again, closer and closer to the action and less of that deep safety role. Belton played a little bit more of that deep safety role, part of the reason his stats were so low. So Newbin is someone who was thought of very highly coming out in the draft this past year, second round rookie that the Giants took very early in the second round. And we're seeing the benefits of his skill set along with the playing time, along with the positioning and defensive alignment. Someone to grab if you can get, if you need some safety help. Micah McFadden was down back down to 77% of snaps, which is roughly what he usually plays. Seven tackles, three solo, way down from the 11 and six, which he had hit his high rate last week in terms of snap count, snap percent. And now he's back down to normal and his snaps, his stats came down with them. Bobby Okereke played 95% of the snaps, 11 tackle, four solo. Ever since I called him out a few weeks ago, he has uh, improved his productivity. You're welcome, everybody. And lastly, in the Brian Burns revenge game against the Panthers, he was all over the place. Nine tackles, four which were solo, a sack, two tackles for loss. So he was a monster this week. Clearly, he wanted to send a message to his old Panthers team that he should have paid me and shouldn't have traded me. And moving on to the Eagles to wrap up this division, they only played 60 snaps on defense. And on top of that, because of it being a blowout against the Cowboys, they pulled many of their starters. Zach Bourne played 85% of the snaps, led the team in tackles with eight, three, which was solo. He had a tackle for loss and he got a very nice fumble recovery as well. Now, Kobe Dean only played 73% though. Now, he was listed on Tuesday because of the Thursday night game. He was listed as limited practice for because of a groin injury. So my guess is that is why he came out of the game, although I didn't hear anything on Sunday specifically about that. But two and two seems to be four in this case. Watch out for this if he's going to be playing Thursday night or not. 
that could be something that with the short week, he may not get in. So keep an eye. Make sure you have another option if you've been relying on the Kobe Dean. The only other thing I want to mention for the Eagles is on the Cooper DeJean side of things. Some people say DeJean. I've heard DeJean. He played 87% of the snaps this week. He had three tackles, three solo, and then once again for return yardage leagues, three punt returns for 43 yards. And by the way, he also got a fumble recovery. Forgot to mention that as well. He played 98% of his snaps either in the slot or on the D-line. So in teams where the Eagles are going against 11 personnel, DeGene, particularly in return yardage leagues, is someone you definitely want to have in your lineup. Let's move to the NFC South in the Bucks. Um, the Bucks' Tyke Smith was inactive uh, with a knee issue. Christian Izian played 59% of the snaps, only 59% of the snaps, four tackle, two solo. So Izian has been playing that slot role like he did last year when Tyke Smith has been out like this knee this week, concussion the, uh, earlier in the season. But the difference is the 49ers play, uh, do not play a lot of 11 personnel. They do do a lot with multiple tight ends. That means Izian wasn't on the field as much. That means he didn't get the stats. Jordan Whitehead led the team with 12 tackles, seven of which are solo. Now let's talk about their linebackers. Um, last week, I mentioned to you all, K.J. Britt did not play 100% of the snaps last week, and J.J. Russell seemed to uh, um, substitute in for him. This week was really interesting. Same type of concept, but Britt only played 64% of the snaps, three tackles, one solo. J.J. Russell only played 19% of the snaps. 64 and 19 doesn't add up to close to 100, folks. So you can, you can see they were doing some different gyrations from a defensive perspective. And now Britt and, if you're thinking about Russell potentially, can't rely on those two right now. Do not put them in your starting lineups. Find a different plan. Maybe put Britt back into your bench. Don't release him necessarily. Because if, if Russell isn't performing well, maybe they push Britt forward. But Britt is struggling in pass coverage. That's why they're taking him out in those situations. Kalaja Kansi, I've been telling y'all since he came back from injury, he's someone to have on your roster. Get him for redraft. Get him for dynasty. Played 67% of the snaps this week. Five tackles, five solo, a sack, two tackles for loss. And uh, remember, last week he had two sacks. Now he kind of... Fell into a couple of those, luckily, but that's it still counts. This week, he got yet another sack. Someone that plays with a high motor. He's got good quickness off the ball. Someone on one of my rosters, folks. Going on to the Falcons. Falcons only played 53% of the snaps on defense. That's all they played, 53 snaps. How they lost to the Saints, my beloved Saints, I'm still not sure. But with only playing 53 snaps on defense, they still lost. Okay, got that out. Caden Ellis. We were wondering what was going to shake out on the linebacker side of things. Caden Ellis played 100% of the snaps, 10 tackles and four solo. Nate Landman played 83% of the snaps, eight tackles, six solo. But they made Troy Anderson active, Ricky. What happened to Troy Anderson? Troy Anderson re-injured his knee. He still played 25% of the snaps, didn't get any stats, but he re-injured re that knee. Not sure what's going to happen here, but as long as he's out, you can roll with both Ellis and Landman. Those aren't, they're, those aren't bad stats considering they only played 53 snaps. Grady Jarrett had left the game last week with an Achilles injury. People feared the worst. I mentioned to you all last week that uh, head coach uh, Raheem Morris said it wasn't that severe as day-to-day. -day. Well, he ended up playing, and he had five assisted tackles on 72% of the snaps. He's fine. Nothing to worry about from an injury perspective. Not the greatest defensive tackle um, IDP in the world, but someone maybe in a bye week uh, you could utilize. Let's go to the secondary. D. Alford, who had been super productive as a slot cornerback, had one tackle this week on 28% of the snaps. So what happened? Mike Hughes got injured. He only played 25% of the snaps. Did Alfred move to the outside corner and that was the problem? No, it was not. When Hughes went out, Clark Phillips went in and played the corner and picked up the, 75, the other 75% of the snaps that Hughes didn't play. The problem was the Saints don't play a lot of 11 personnel. And as a result of that, Alfred wasn't on the field nearly as much. Once again, only 28% of the snaps. And when you're on, that, on the field that little, 
you're not going to get the stats. So that is the message, folks. 11 personnel, understand that for the teams that your slot cornerback might be playing, that'll make a dis- that'll impact if you play him or not. Okay, folks, lastly on the Saints, a lot to talk about on the Saints. Um, first, they played 78 snaps on defense. So if the Falcons played 53-ish, now you know why the Saints played 78. DeMario Davis played 100% of the snaps. He actually led the team with 10 tackles and two solo. It was like he was rejuvenated with a new head coach because he wasn't getting us that kind of stats. Now, once again, it was on 78 snaps, folks. Pete Werner left the game with a hand injury after 67% of the snaps. So he only had five tackles. Willie Gay played 17% of the snaps and had four tackles and two solo. The net of this, folks, is be careful about if Werner's uh, out this coming week. Don't be too confident in putting Willie Gay in. They have not been giving him close to 80 or 90% of the snaps when Werner or Davis were out. Now the secondary. Alante Taylor, start with him. I warned you all last week that this was a big risk that with so many cornerbacks coming out that Taylor wouldn't play in the slot. He would potentially play on the outside. Sure enough, my crystal ball was correct. He played... Uh, Let's see here. 85% of his snaps, he played 100% in total. 85% of those were on the outside. Only 15 were closer to the box or or on the D-line or in the slot. So that has a risk of continuing. Let's talk about the rest of the cornerbacks. Shamar Jean Charles played 100% of the snaps. Ugo Amadi played 100% of the snaps, including 95% in the slot slash in the box slash on the D-line. He had nine tackles, none of which was solo, three tackles for loss, and a pass defense. Amadi ended up getting Alante Taylor's numbers that that Alante Taylor had been seeing early this year. It's that simple. Now, if Kool-Aid McKinstry is back from injury this current week, that throws an interesting monkey wrench into this thing. So what's going to potentially happen? I think that McKinstry and Gene Charles potentially starting the outside and Taylor in the slot. I said, potentially, I don't feel confident about that. I think there's a risk that uh, McKinstry and Taylor stay on the outside and Amadi stays in the slot. So what am I doing? I'm only potentially still playing Alante Taylor because he was super productive even on the outside. But once again, that was with the the Falcons offense or the Saints defense playing 78, 78 snaps. I'm being, uh, you know, I'm willing to play Taylor, but I'm a lot more cautious than I was earlier in the year. At safety, real quick, Will Harris returned from injured reserve, and he had eight tackles and three solo, playing 100% of the snaps at safety alongside the Honey Badger, Tyron Matthew. At defensive end, last thing for the Saints, I told you there was a lot on the Saints. Lots of change in the percentage of snaps. Chase Young was down to 54%. Cam Jordan was way back up to 54%. Peyton Turner played a season high 41%. Granderson was down from roughly, let's just call it the mid 70s to 67%. So what uh, the new head coach has put into play, working with the defensive coordinator, is to have more of a platoon and rotation defensive end and uh, jacking up Jordan as well as Peyton Turner's playing time. Both Jordan and Turner got a sack. I'm wondering, though, to be honest with you, if this is the last sack of Jordan's career. As a loyal Saint fan, appreciate everything he's done, but he is just not the Camp Jordan of old when I watch my Saints play. All right, let's go to the NFC West now, and let's talk about the Cardinals. Um, oh, by the way, as a side note, I'm not picking up any of those guys. Um, I'm, I'm still sticking with Granderson, but um, we're not picking up Jordan. We're not picking up Turner, but we're watching Turner. And Chase Young, I would leave him as is. Cardinals played only 58 snaps on defense. Darius Robinson, the rookie, was inactive yet again. Jalen Thompson, he had an ankle. He was he was limited in practice, was question, listed as questionable. Ended up being inactive, which was a bit of surprise. So the rookie from, I believe it was Texas Tech, Dadrian Taylor Demerson, played 100% of the snaps in his absence and had six tackles, five of which were solo, two pass defenses. So pretty darn productive overall, particularly considering on 58 snaps. If Thompson is out, someone I'm considering in deep leagues is Taylor Dimerson. Booter Baker 
wow, he was all over the place if he had a chance to watch that game. Nine tackles, six solo, got a sack, three tackles for loss, pass defense. You know, with a sack comes a quarterback hit. Just, you know, really productive. Baron Browning, the newly acquired uh, edge player, only played 31%, which was about 18 snaps, so not a whole lot. Uh, but once again, that was his first game. He didn't get any stats, but he did have a key pressure late in the game, forcing Rodgers up into the pocket that caused problems. And so uh, Browning, I think his playing time will continue to increase. On to the 49ers. Not a lot of hope to talk about there. Traverius Ward inactive yet again. Devondre Campbell surprisingly played 100% of the snaps. Two weeks in a row for him at 100%. And fairly productive on the 62 snaps that the 49ers played. Seven tackles, four solo tackle for loss, pass defense. Really surprised. D. Winters was coming back from concussion. Only played 25% of the snaps. Still a risk that Devondre Campbell, as Winters ramps back in, Campbell, his playing time comes back down a little bit. Be careful on Campbell. The other thing, reminder, I've been mentioning every week, i got to mention it again, Dre Greenlaw, there's a chance in late November he is back, and that will certainly cut into Campbell's playing time. On the Rams, oh my goodness, a lot to talk about there. Only played 53 snaps on the one hand. Let's talk about what we saw. Christian Roseboom last week, 98% of the snaps after the week before being in the 60% range. So what does he do? Um, on Monday night, only back down to 62% of the snaps with only three tackles, two solo pass defense after having major stats the week before when he played 98% of the snaps. Omar Spites, who we talked about many times on this show, who was so disappointed when they took him down to 6% of the snaps last week after he seemed to have played so well the week before in the, in the like roughly 40% of the playing time he had. So I'm bummed out. I'm telling people, got to pull him out of your lineups, you know, maybe keep him on the end of your bench, et cetera. Played the most snaps at the linebacker position with 74%. Big jump up. Eight tackles, six solo, one tackle for loss on only 53 snaps. That's pretty darn efficient and productive, folks. If you had dropped him, <laughs> go back and get him again. But part of what I worry about is will this kind of matchup dependent changes happen? Because Jalen McCullough, who played 70% of the snaps last week, played 70% of that 70% within the box, close to the line, et cetera. This week, he only plays 25% of the snaps which turned out to be 13. Now, 11 of those were close to the line of scrimmage, but only 11 snaps, 25% total. So McCullough is someone of maybe a taxi squad stash. Certainly don't put him into your lineup. I did tell you all to pick him up. I whispered it, remember, for those that were watching last week, but I didn't say put him in your lineup. So this was a watch thing, and this is one we continue to watch, I think. On well, the safety side of things, Quentin Lake played 100%. You can still rely on Quentin Lake. Seven tackles, five solo. He played 51% of the snaps deep, 49% close to the line. Rather see more, but that's not bad. And those stats aren't bad once again for 53 snaps. Cam Curl only played 62% of the snaps, of which he played 61% deep. Cam Kitchens played 74% of the snaps, 82% deep. Now, Kinchins had the big stats because of the two interceptions a week ago. This past week, Monday night, one tackle, one solo. That was it. Boom. That's it. So what what are we saying about the Rams' safeties? Trust Lake. Can't trust Curl. Can't trust Kinchins. Braden Fisk did play for those that y'all are, that those of y'all that are wondering because he didn't crack the stat sheet, but he did play 53% of the snaps. Um, look, he's a rookie. Um, He's surrounded by a lot of other good young players as well, which included Kobe Turner, Jared Verse, Byron Young, who are all, who are doing a fantastic job up front. Verse as a, Fisk as a rookie is going to have his ups and downs, particularly as a rookie, more downs than ups. In Dynasty, I'm still holding him. On Rejaft, there's probably better options. And uh, that wraps up the Rams on the Seahawks side of things. Okay. It was a bye week, so I thought, okay, we won't have anything to talk about on the, on the Seahawks. Ah, wrong. Big news on Tuesday. They put on waivers their leading tackler, Tyrell Dodson, their leading tackler. Now, remember, they acquired Ernest Jones. He came and played the primary mic position. 
Dotson was playing more of that will or weak side linebacker role, but was still wearing the green dot and still playing 100% of the snaps. One of the things we talked about, oh, it was on the Start Sit Show, actually. I asked a question about Terrell Dotson. Part of what I explained on the Start Sit Show, Start Sit Show, sorry if I said that wrong, which, by the way, Sunday mornings, 11 a.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. Central, for about an hour. We we're answering start sit questions, and we specialize obviously in IDP, but we're also taking offensive questions as well. Please join us and bring your start sit questions there. If you'd asked about Jalen McCullough, by the way, we would have told you do not start him. I digress. Anyway, back to Tyrell Dotson. Part of what we said on start start sit show was that he's just a guy for the most part. He was an undrafted guy out of Texas A&M. Solid, nothing spectacular. If you watch the games, you can see how often he was close to a play, trailing a play. Yeah, he got a decent amount of tackles. He was more like a linebacker four, low linebacker three, linebacker four. For deep leagues, you can play him, but someone you're certainly not starting on a regular basis. Now, this has implication to the Dolphins. We'll get to that later. Now, the other thing is, okay, who's going to step in for Dotson? Tyrese Knight. The, I believe it was the third round rookie that the Seahawks drafted, maybe fourth, but I think it was third round. He played earlier this year, but he wasn't playing 100% of the snaps. What's the thought process now, at least Ricky's crystal ball's thought process is, he, Tyrese Nato play the run defense snaps. Drake Thomas or another safety will come in on passing downs, on obvious passing downs. So I you can pick up Tyrese Knight. You can put him on your bench. Do not play him, please. This could be similar to the Levante David thing, which Ernest Jones is that equivalent for Seattle now. And then this, you know, uh, K.J. Britt, Servasia Dennis, J.J. Russell situation at the other linebacker position. I see a lot of similarities there. We're not playing that that right-hand side of things, the, the, the Britts, the Russells, the Tyrese Knights. Drake Thomas's, et cetera, until we see potentially if Ricky's crystal ball is wrong. Okay, that wraps up the NFC, folks. We're going to move on to the AFC. And let's start with the East with the Bills. Dorian Williams of the team with nine tackles, six solo, and a tackle for loss on a very nice 69% of these snaps. Terrell Bernard, starting Mike linebacker, played 90, 92% of the snaps only. It was a bit of a blowout. So he did get nine tackles in a pass defense as part of that. Valen Spector was put on IR when Bernard sat out late in the game. Nicholas Morrow was the one that came in for him. Here is the big, however, for both potentially Bernard and or Williams. Matt Milano on Tuesday was designated to return from IR. The 21-day window was opened up. So that means some point within the last, the next three weeks, unless something happens, Milano will be activated. Dorian Williams replaced him player for player. Bernard was in the middle. Milano was on the wills in the will spot. That's where Williams has been playing. If Milano comes back, there's a risk to Dorian Williams, as we've talked about in the past, that he goes to the bench. Or he plays at number three linebacker and gets like 30% of the snaps or something silly like that, which won't do you any good. So if you could stash Milano, get him and stash him. And, and also start making contingency plans definitely for Dorian Williams and potentially for Bernard if they decide for whatever reason they want to put Milano in the middle. Or because Bernard has been so injury prone and with Spectre on IR, Milano might be the person to fill in there. Okay. Greg Russo, four great games in a row. I've been singing his praises. Hopefully you've been trying to get him. I know trade, trade deadlines are nearing. Try and get him, folks. He will be worth it. And, of course, Teron Johnson gets a pick six and a sack. Once again, outstanding job from that slot cornerback. On the Dolphins side of things, they played a very healthy 70 snaps against the Rams. Jordan Brooks played 100% of the snaps at linebacker. Anthony Walker played 99% of the snaps. We talked about it last week. David Long went to the bench. Anthony Walker came and played 100%. Guess what? We had an exact repeat of that. David Long, zero, zilch, not a, not a single snap on defense and no stats. Anthony Walker, nine tackles, three of which were solo, a pass defense and an interception. Back to Brooks. He led the team with 11 tackles, six solo, and a tackle for loss. But what did we just talk about? They just claimed Tyrell Dodson off waivers. They didn't wait to sign him as a free agent. They claimed him because they wanted to make sure they get him. 
That's probably bad news for Brooks and or Walker. I am guessing it's bad news for Walker. Not necessarily right away, but you could see Dotson in that Walker role once he gets acclimated with the defense. Or he could be just there for death because they're so disappointed in David Long. What it means, you could drop David Long at this point, folks. There was a chance maybe they were going to, you know, let him learn behind the veteran Walker and then put him back in, all that kind of stuff. Nah, it's done. He's gone. David Long put him on, you know, put him on the waiver wire. Shoot, bye bye. Okay, Kendall Fuller had a second con- concussion of the year for those that play him in uh, deep leagues at an outside cornerback position. Uh, that's a rote row. High probability we don't see him very much the rest of the year. Clay Campbell, just got to say, that man is incredible at age 38. If you need interior defensive lineman, someone you can rely on and pick up. Zach Sealer played with a fractured orbital bone. Uh, he's still running around like a madman with that, though. Five tackles, two solo, a tackle for loss, a pass defense, a quarterback hit. I mean, really impressive, uh, the motor of the guy. Chop Robinson. A few weeks ago, I said, he's been getting a lot of pressures. Will it eventually turn into actual stats, though? For the second week in a row, Chop Robinson comes through with a sack. I may have to eat my words uh, that I had very early this year that loved him as an athlete, didn't like him as a football player. Maybe he's getting the right tutelage and all. But, uh, of course, they haven't to play him because of the lack of death because of all the injuries with Chubb and Jalen Phillips and so forth. But for now, someone in very deep leagues – where you get points for big plays like sacks, someone you might be able to desperately play. On the Jets side of things, C.J. Mosley inactive once again. The Jets only played 59 snaps on defense. That's not usually very good. With that, Jamie and Sirwood played 98% of the snaps, though, in Mosley's place. 17 tackles total, with seven of which were solo and a tackle for loss. Folks, that is freaking ultra-productive. I don't see how Mosley at his age and the productivity that Sherwood is showing and the efficiency he's showing, I don't know how Sherwood goes back to the bench for Mosley. I just don't see it happening. Jamie, uh, excuse me, Quincy Williams also played 100% of the snaps, 10 tackles, three solo, a sack, a tackle for loss, a quarterback hit. Um, last week against Houston, the Jets had eight sacks. This past week, one. That's how much the Texans' offensive line struggled. That's how much the Jets had this overproductivity because of that bad offensive line. And that's how much the Jets are just struggling in general. Let's go to the safety position. Tony Adams returns from being out with injury. He played 81% of the snaps in that t- and returned 10 tackles, five of which were solo. Isaiah Oliver played 31% of the snaps in safety. He was the one that was starting while Adams was out. Jalen Mills continues to fill that Chuck Clark role. Played 100% of the snaps, eight tackles, one of which was solo, 53% of the snaps in the box. Jalen Mills also has cornerback designation in a lot of leagues. Jalen Mills is someone I am picking up. If you didn't do it last week, I'm telling you again, pick him up, put him on your roster for the rest of this year. Hassan Reddick, 37% of the snaps. Glad he showed up to, you know, back to the team to have two tackles and one of one of which was solo in this game. Will McDonald played only 54% of the snaps and had one assisted tackle, one quarterback hit, which would by the say by the way, his same line two weeks in a row. Last week's fool's goal that I told you about, Michael Clemens, who had a great line. I said he's fool's goal. Don't pick him up. He had one tackle. It was a solo tackle, but just one as uh, I warned you all about. Moving on to the Patriots, Kyle Duggar was inactive yet again. Christian Ellis was also inactive. And Raquan McMillan, who I've been telling you how the snap, snap counts been coming down and down and down. They finally gave him the old heave-ho and cut him. So he, you know, he's gone. If you are holding out hope for some reason, please finally let go of him. The Patriots only played 60 snaps on defense. They had nine sacks of Caleb Williams. The Patriots had one of the lowest sack totals of the entire league going into that game last week. That tells you a lot about Caleb Williams and the Bears and why Shane Waldron was fired on Tuesday as the offensive coordinator. Okay, we're not talking offense. Back to the defense, though. So what that means is the Bears offense was so bad, 
Jelani Tavai, for example, played 100% of the snaps, particularly with Ellis out and McMillan release. And Tavai had nine tackles, seven solo, a sack, a tackle for loss, pass defense quarterback hit. That was against the Bears. Don't expect that to repeat in the coming weeks. Fool's gold? Ooh, got a lot for you. Jeremiah Forms. Who? Jeremiah Forms. Five tackles, four solo, a sack, three tackles for loss, a quarterback hit. There's your fool's gold. Ha! But there's more. Anthony Jennings, we said in, t- in tackle leagues where tackle scoring is premium for an edge person, you could do worse than Anthony Jennings in your deeper leagues. He had two sacks. Dietrich Wise, two sacks. Safety, undrafted free agent, Del Pettis got a sack. These are all outliers. These are all fool's gold. It was all against the Bears. Don't go chasing these guys. Some good news, though. Keon White played 90% of the snaps. That's the second time the last two weeks he's done that. And his productivity has been up both weeks as a result. When he had dropped down, he was playing like that early in the year. They dropped down his snap count. Now they're bumping it back up. And with that is coming productivity. So White goes back into our lineup, folks, if you had taken him out. All right. Bengals, AFC North, played 63 snaps. The safety rotation continues between Jordan Battle and Von Bell. Battle played 48% of the snaps, Von Bell 52%. Listen to the stat difference. 48% of the snaps of Battle, seven tackles, five solo, pass defense quarterback hit. Von Bell, two tackles, zero solo. What does that say, folks? Dump Von Bell for sure. But don't put Jordan Battle into your lineups. 48% snaps is not enough. So even though he had that good efficiency for that limited snaps, do not put him in your lineup yet, folks. Okay, the Browns were on by. Let's move on to the Ravens. On the Ravens side of things, they played 82 snaps this past week after 72 the week before, after a nice 69 the week before that. So they're playing a lot of snaps above average, folks, these last three weeks. Uh, now, remember, Brent Urban was rolled out. Uh, Michael Pierce was placed on IR a couple years ago. So you start to see other players get more snaps than typically don't, which is create some fool's gold. But it also means, for example, Nandi, Namdi Matabuike is playing more. And he was challenged by the coach they talked about during the broadcast to be more of a warrior, crazy man, whatever you call it. I can't remember the exact words, but he finishes with five tackles, three solo, three sacks. That's the Matabuki we saw last year. So I think they lit a fire under his tush and he is, you know, he is turning it up. On the linebacker side of things, Roquan Smith, I told you not to worry about his stats from last week. He only played about 75% of the snaps in the blowout and he had very limited stats. What happens this week? Back to 12 tackles, six solo, and a quarterback hit. Trent Simpson still played 90 plus percent of the snaps. Getting the wear, particularly with four buys, four teams on buy this coming week. Simpson is someone we could definitely consider putting into our lineups. Seven tackles, four solo. When I say put him in the lineups, I'm not saying in shallow leagues. We're talking about deeper leagues where we would put him in. Odafe Owe, I love this player. I think it's going to tra- it's going to translate soon and what I mean by that is like this week he had four quarterback hits but no sacks. He's got a pretty good pressure rate per PFF um, in terms of win success rates but only two tackles one solo. He's someone I'm still looking to buy in the cheap. Safety side of things, Kyle Hamilton left with an ankle injury, played 51% of the snaps. Um, or Darius Washington is the man to pick up in his absence. He played 72% of the snaps in total. And uh, so he is the one to work, uh, to, to, excuse me, not work, but to grab potentially if Hamilton does not play. Once again, not as a top one, not a number one safety, not a number two safety, but potentially like a number three safety um, is probably the range we have him. Okay, another fool's gold. To tell you guys, Tavius Robinson, I said, don't, don't, don't pick him up. Don't chase that fool's goal last week. Just to replay what happened this week, 23% of the snaps, two tackles, one assist. Versus the previous week when he had two sacks, four quarterback hits, etc. So trust me when on some of these fool's goal, folks. I'm steering y'all right. Let's go to the Steelers. They played 64 snaps, which is fantastic. Big blow, Alex Highsmith, lower left leg injury. Uh, he left the, he left the stadium on crutches. 
the early information on Tuesday uh, is that it's a two to three week injury. Not likely they put him on IR. There are some internet doctors and I, look, some of those guys do fantastic jobs that were speculating like fractured ankle and things along those lines. Maybe it is that we haven't gotten that word. Tomlin saying two to three weeks or week to week is what he said. Others are saying two to three weeks from different sources. So right now, assume two to three weeks. If he goes on IR, uh, that's a that's a real bummer because his he has been one of the leading pressure rate, pressure win rate edge players in the whole league this year when he has played. So Preston Smith ended up playing 36% of the snaps who they just acquired for the Packers. So he picked up a decent amount of the snaps that Highsmith missed. Highsmith played 80% of the snaps still. This was late in the game. Watt played about 88%. So just to give you perspective, um, Preston Smith in the 36%, three tackles, three solo, got a sack, two tackles for loss and a quarterback hit. So really productive on the 36%. So you're thinking, hmm, do I go and add Preston Smith? Well, before you do that, folks, Nick Herbig, who the Steelers absolutely love, uh, second-year player, it, uh, it, was, it was mentioned on Tuesday that they expect him back this week. So you'll see White playing 88% of the snaps, and when he's out, maybe it's Smith, maybe it's Herbig replacing him, and then there's a rotation on the other side with Herbig and Preston Smith most likely until High Smith is back. So keep that in mind when you're setting your lineups. That's Ricky's forecast of what's going to happen there. Patrick Queen led the team in tackles with a whopping seven tackles, six solo. Okay, a little bit of sarcasm there. He's just not generating the stats, folks. He's 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 look, LSU player, got it. Love what he's done in the past, particularly last year with the Ravens. Different scheme, different situation. It is not generating the IDP stats. Try and use the name right here before the trade trade deadline and sell him and try and get something back in return. Really interesting also at the linebacker position for the Steelers. Elaine and Roberts jumped up to 67% of the snaps this week. Five tackle, four solo, big increase in snaps and a little bit of productivity with it. Still someone you can't trust in your lineup. My biggest disappointment though, Peyton Wilson all the way down to 20% of the snaps with only one with only one tackle, which was solo. So a huge decrease in snaps. Very disappointing on what they did with Peyton Wilson there. Cam Hayward played a whopping 86% of the snaps, by far his season high. Uh, that's how much I think this game against the Commanders meant to the Steelers. And he had two pretty much across the board, two tackles, two which were solo, two sacks, which means two tackles for loss, which means two quarterback hits. And by the way, he threw in a pass defense. 35 years old, not bad. Deshaun Elliott, only 70% of the snaps after only playing 75% of the snaps. Casey played 20%. I think on really, really obvious downs, and unfortunately I didn't get a chance to research as much as I would like, folks. Like I told you, I've been dealing with a, a little lack of sleep and uh, had a lot to do for uh, my other job, my real job. And uh, But Casey seems to be going in on obvious passing situations. So while I'll, Elliot is very effective when he's in there, that 70 and 75% scares the heck out of me. I'm looking in a different direction. All right, let's move on to the Colts, everybody. And uh, the Colts played a whopping 75 snaps. Flacco is not doing it on offense. Anthony Richardson was not doing it on offense. The Colts are playing a hell of a lot of defensive snaps. That is very good for our individual defensive players. Love it. EJ Speed led the team in tackles. Oh, he didn't excuse me, he didn't lead the team in tackles, but he had six tackles, four solo, two pass defense, including interception. So that interception certainly helped his stats. Sire Franklin, nine tackles, five solo, and a pass defense. Those two linebackers I'm putting in my lineups every week. If I have both on my rosters, which I have, I, which I do in one of my favorite dynasty week leagues, I'm playing both of them every week. Nothing stopped me from doing that. Nick Cross led the team in tackles with 12, seven of which were solo and a tackle for loss. Now, DeForest Buckner's return has really elevated the play of Grover Stewart. Those two together are beast on the inside. You know, they double one, frees up the other one, and it's really helping both of them. Buckner plays 80% of the snaps this past week. Stewart only 59% of the snaps. But Stewart in that, eight tackles, four solo, a sack, and a quarterback hit. 
Buckner, eight tackles, three solo in a quarterback yet. And remember, Buckner missed a lot of time with that ankle injury. So he's he's a little bit fresher out there. And uh, so that's causing a little bit havoc for people that have been playing every week on the, along the offensive line. This is a good thing for Buckner and Stewart both. Lastly, shout out to Kenny Moore, seven tackles, five solo, two pass defense and an interception. One of the best slot cornerbacks in the league. And the beautiful thing about him, when they're in two, two cornerbacks, two outs, he plays on the outside. When they go to three cornerbacks, he moves to the slot. L- love that for Kenny Moore. Moving on to the Texans. Played a normal amount of snaps at 65. Will Anderson was declared inactive. So when he was asked if he'll play next week, he said, ah, we'll see. That's what he told the sideline reporter, which doesn't sound promising. Make sure you have plans to replace Will Anderson next week. Um, Aziz Al-Shahir returned. Had to slowly pronounce that. Five tackles, three solo, two tackles for loss on 94% of the snaps. He's back. Not very productive numbers-wise for his first game back. So snap count isn't an issue. Still somebody I'm playing, though, but he's more of a low linebacker, two high linebacker, three at this point. Henry Toto still played 98% of the snaps, but he only had two tackles, one of which was solo in a pass defense. Sometimes teams, it's matchups, how the offense attacks defenses, and that's what appears to happen to this the inside linebacker crew of the Texans this past week. Devin White actually played 18% of the snaps, and I, I'll give credit. I know it's from LSU. Gave him a hard time last week. But he had three tackles, one of which was solo. And he was flying around the field pretty good for the, when he was on the field. So if there's another injury here, maybe it's him instead of Neville Hewitt. Just keep an eye on that. The safety position from a snap conference, uh, snap percentage perspective was a cluster. Jalen Petrie, 78%. Jimmy Ward, 66%. Kalen Bullock, 62%. Murray, 78%. I believe it was Troy Aikman on the broadcast talked about the fact that uh, they were loading up more for protecting against the run. And as a result, they played uh, a little bit more Ward and Petrie. But then um, as the game progressed, they actually pulled in Bullock because of some of the passing that was going on. And then Murray came in as well. But it was just a complete cluster. Man, with, with those percentages, I am really nervous about putting any of those four in my lineup next week. Even Petrie, who I love, who I predicted incorrectly, I'll be honest with you, to be a, a top 12 safety. It's not painting out quite that well this year. Even him, I'm not putting in lineup with these kind of numbers. Moving on to the Titans. They only played 59 snaps on defense. The Jarius Sneed was out with a quad injury again and expected to probably be out this week as well for those of you in cornerback leads because he's typically been a high scorer in the past. Just wanted to mention that. Quandre Diggs injured last week, out for the year, put on IR. Mike Brown uh, picked up his snaps when Diggs was injured and played 98% of the snaps this week, had uh, second on the team in tackles with seven tackles and five solo. At the linebacker position, Jack Gibson, Jack Gibbons and Kenneth Murray played 100% of the snaps. Listen to the difference. And I did dog Kenneth Murray last week, and I'm going to dog him again, particularly after I saw him get uh, faked out of his uh, cleats a couple of times this week was Murray um, in watching the game. But Gibbons had a, a 15 tackles, 10 solo on just 59 snaps. That's awesome. Murray, six tackles, three solo. Which, by the way, for the second week in, a, week in a row, matched his tackle count. So Gibbons is playing. Murray's not. Jerome Baker, who they acquired in the Ernest Jones trade, once again, no defensive stats, no stats recorded. That's now three weeks since the trade. I talked about it last week. They're starting to send a message that we just wanted that fourth-round draft pick, So, and we weren't going to re-sign Ernest Jones for what he was asking for. We didn't really care about Baker. The way Gibbons is playing, he's certainly not going in for him. There's a chance, even with the money Murray got paid in the offseason, and I mentioned this last week, I'll mention it again, that maybe they get fed up with Murray and Baker goes in for him. Uh, we'll see. Be careful about playing Murray. And uh, Cedric, Gay, Cedric Gray, when, uh, excuse me, Cedric Gray, for the third time, was inactive this past week. He was their fourth round rookie as the team continues to head down. The we're not going to be in the playoffs situation. 
I can see them potentially even moving gray in next to Gibbons as well. Something to keep an eye on, folks. On the Broncos side of things, they also played a very nice 69 snaps this past week. Brandon Jones led the team with seven tackles, four of which were solo. Uh, P.J. Locke returned from injury. I told you last week, don't pick up Davin Key. Locke's coming back. Locke is back. Now, seven tackles and four solo on 99% of the snaps for Locke. You know, uh, a low in three, high in four type of safety because they're not using him to blitz a lot like they did last year. and They don't need to because the edge and the interior line is just creating so much pressure. They don't need to blitz those safeties. So that's what's impacting Locke this year, folks. Uh, by the way, this week is the fantasy football and the goat shirt for those that were curious what I what shirt I'm wearing this week. You know, uh, a gift from my league because I want one of my leagues because I won it so many times. OK, back to linebackers. Cody Barton, 100 percent of the snaps, nine tackles, two solo. Um, he only had seven last week's uh, tackles total, one of which was solo. So a bunch of assisted tackles. So Barton is good from helping to clean up things right now, but he's not exactly generating things, except for when he played the Saints, when the Saints were really at their suckiest, lowest point. Okay, moving on to Justin Sternard, who last week only played 25% of the snaps, and I said, guys, don't play him. Quan Alexander, for the third week in a row, played more snaps, and so Alexander was clearly ahead of Sternard. So what did they do this week? They had already called up Quan Alexander three times from the practice squad. If you do it a fourth time, you have to sign him to the active roster. So no, 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 they don't call him up this week. They call up Zach Cunningham. So if you go back to one of the early shows, you know, one of these earlier IDP Plus advice shows, you heard me talk about when they signed Quan Alexander and Zach Cunningham to the practice squad. They called Cunningham up from the practice squad this week. The difference between him and Alexander, Cunningham played zero, zilch, nada, nothing, no defensive snaps, not a single one, and he didn't record any stats at all. So be watching to see if Quan Alexander this week gets signed to the active roster. That's the thing to watch for. If he is, then, and you're desperate in a really deep league, he's like a number five linebacker almost, but, but that's where Alexander is. Don't pick up Zach Cunningham. Sternard, if that happens with Alexander, do not put Stern in your lineup. Not that you should be entrusting uh, and, and you shouldn't be trusting him, but just as an FYI, don't do it. Okay. On the edge, Nick Benito, he had his last week had his snap sack sack rate. Well, let me try that again. He, once again, this is like a sleep, sleep, folks. He had six sacks in a, six games with a sack in a row. Then last week he did. The previous, and then now this past week he certainly did. So seven sacks in the last eight games. That's pretty darn good for Benito. Back to my comments about them not needing to rush lock. In fact, for for your reference, he had three tackles, three which were solo, and the sack. But he also had three quarterback hits, and his playing time was up to 66% with a trade of Baron Browning. Good news for Benito all the way around. Jonathan Cooper played 71% of the snaps. He also had a sack. Now, Jonah Ellis bumps up to the number three edge linebacker position for the Broncos, but his snaps stayed steady at 43%. He also played four of his 29 snaps in that inside linebacker position, which is also, once again, something to watch. Another reason not to play Sternard. Another reason to be very careful in Alexander, et cetera. Okay. Uh, Dondrea Tillman, who had a big game. He was fool's gold earlier this year. He became the number four edge player for the Broncos, but only played 29% of the snaps. Do not go chasing Tillman just because of what he did in one game earlier this year, folks. That's your Broncos. Let's go to the Chargers. They played only 54 snaps on defense, but they had seven team snap, uh, sacks. So about every seven and a half snaps, the Chargers got a sack. Tells you all you need to know about the opposition this past week for them, folks. 
Dayon Hindley, as we talked about last week, has taken over the linebacker room, played 100% of the snaps. Uh, and uh, yeah, 100% of the snaps, sorry. He was their leading tackler with 14 tackles, 11 solo, got a sack, a tackle for loss, a quarterback hit, second week in a row with 14 tackles in total. Hinley is moving up the linebacker chain. He's now in that definitely high number two linebacker range, potentially even, particularly with the buys, a low number one linebacker. Hinley is way up the charts, folks. Uh, Denzel Perryman was at 54% of the snaps, but he only had two tackles, one of which was solo. Remember, they only played 54 snaps, but Perryman's someone we're typically not playing. Junior, even with Junior Coulson being placed on IR, we're still not playing Perryman. Thule T, who I couldn't pronounce his name last week, so I'm not even going to try this week, had two sacks again this week after two and a half last week. Love the motor, love the en- energy. But Joy Bosa got a sack. Bud Dupree had two sacks. I mentioned Hinley having a sack. Seven sacks in total across the team, folks. This week's Fool's Gold, Bud Dupree, five tackles, four, which was solo, two sacks. Two tackles for loss, two quarterback hits. Granted, it was on a very nice 69% of the snaps, but don't go chasing Bud Dupree, folks. Particularly with Bosa now being healthy, or at least healthier, and playing more, we're not playing Bud Dupree. Going with the Chiefs, it is really hard to trust any of the Chiefs IDP, folks. They only played 58 snaps this week. After the last two weeks, before that, playing 55 snaps and 52. We should be averaging 65 to 66. The offense is just playing incredibly great ball control, short passing, move the ball down the field slowly, being very patient and all, wiping out uh, the the time of, or the Chiefs offense, let me try that again, owning time of possession. Chiefs just aren't getting that many snaps on defense. So, uh, there's really, and then on top of that, Bolton only played 93% of the snaps. Tranquil only played 86% of the snaps at linebacker. That's just not going to cut it for for our RDP needs at linebacker team. Um, Nazi Johnson led the team in tackles. He became their number two cornerback this past week and played. He played 90% of the snaps uh, on the outside. So 90% of the snaps he played were on the outside. But yet, get this: 10 tackles, six solo. He did get a sack and a tackle for loss in a quarterback hit. But what the 10 tackles mean, they were attacking the hell out of him as opposed to going against Trent McDuffie. That was the weak spot they decided to go after. We always love it when there's a cornerback who's just good enough to start but can easily be picked on and targeted. And that's what happened with Nazi Johnson. The question, though, I have, is he going to continue as a number two cornerback? Because if he made 10 tackles, Guess what? That means he gave up a lot of completions. I could see them going to another cornerback this coming week. So I'm not trusting Nazi Johnson, folks. I'm not trusting any of the Chiefs based on the uh, snap counts for the defense. A couple other points I just want to make out, though. Make out on the Chiefs. Josh Uche got a goose egg this week. He only played about nine snaps, if I remember correctly. Um, That was his week two on the team. He is going to be a designated pass rusher, play very few snaps, only on these very, very obvious passing situations when they can get him on the field if the other team's not going to hurry up or some of those lines. So if you're holding out hope for Uchi because he went to the Chiefs, uh, maybe not cut him yet, but certainly we're nowhere close to putting him in his lineup. The very last thing to mention, Charles Ominahu on Tuesday, who was – very, very productive for the Chiefs last year until that knee injury late in the year, which actually I believe was in the playoffs, if I remember correctly. His 21-day window was also activated today, along with Isaiah Pacheco as FYI for just a quick offensive tidbit there. But within 21 days, expect Ominahu to be back on the edge for the Chiefs, which would once again nip away at Uche, probably nip away at Michael Dana, Give Karlaftis maybe a few steps off as well. Stay away from all these Chiefs IDP players, folks. The Raiders, they're on by. And with that, we have made it through all 32 teams on the IDP Plus Advice Show. So for week 10, 
Thank you for hanging in there with me for this hour and four minutes so far. Once again, IDP Start Sit Show on this IDP Plus YouTube channel, Sunday mornings, 11 Eastern. Myself and a couple of my cohorts are there to answer your Start Sit questions and help you to bring a victory. But IDP Plus has so much more. Please check us out. We have a one-month subscription. You see we have a 20% off right now. Come check out our articles. Come check out our tools. We have also props articles. And check out our IDP Plus YouTube channel for props, for betting, IDP Plus bets. I've mentioned it every week. We are making a lot of money for a lot of people. We're getting a lot of direct uh, comments in th through some of our Discord channels, for example, which you have access to as a member. So please join us. Check us out. I hope you find this helpful. Please leave comments down below. I will try and get to your questions. Uh, give me about 24 hours roughly, and I will get to your questions if you post them below. But if you don't get them answered here, come to the Start Sit Show, and we will answer them there. With that, we will call it a wrap. Thank you again very much. Be safe. Be kind to one another and take care. YouTube Network. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Be sure to tap the bell icon to get notified whenever we upload new content.